The Corvega assembly plant lies just south of downtown Lexington. It likely provided jobs for most of the people who lived here. But when we find it in 2287, it is swarming with raiders. There are a few ways to enter this huge, sprawling plant. The first, of course, is to go through the front door. We see a road passing directly in front of the factory's front door. Here we see a bus stop and a wrecked car, but the front door is heavily guarded by raiders. <laughs> Even after killing the raiders just outside the door and on the scaffolding, we still find more raiders in the scaffolding on top of the factory. I'm not even going to attempt to snipe them from here. The glare in this fog makes it really hard to see. Above the front door is a beautiful Corvega logo. Check out the way they do that V. We could walk through the front door. We see a broken pipe directly in front of it. Makes me wonder if there are any other pipes leading into the factory. Or we could turn around and go up some steps, leading to a small door overlooking the front door. One must have been an entrance for factory employees, and the other an entrance for the public or business bigwigs. But those are not the only two options. If we turn east, we see a whole other section to the plant guarded by more raiders. Creeping forward, we find a small road leading up to this section of the plant, guarded by more raiders. This must have been a delivery ramp leading back behind the factory. We find even more raiders hanging out in the catwalks and hiding in surprising places. Come on out. I'll make it nice and quick. You can trust me. At the top of the road, we pass by a few delivery trucks and more scaffolding towards the south. Looking back, we see a pod crossing the road and a raider walking along it. We find another door here, but this one is chained from the other side. I wanted to do this on my stealth character and didn't want to waltz through the front door, so perhaps we can find another entrance behind the building. Heading up a stairway to the west, we can open a gate where we find a pod on the ground here. Inside, we just find a chem box and some other minor loot. But outside, we see a whole bunch of pipes. Big rusted pipes, blue pipes, red pipes, black pipes. We can climb in one of them, but there's nothing in there, but this gives me the idea that if there are so many pipes leading into this factory, that over the span of 210 years, perhaps one of them has cracked, giving us a back entrance into the factory. Continuing around the building, we see a delivery truck, a forklift lifting big crates, and then around the very back, we just find a lot of grass. There's some water here and pipes leading into the water, scaffolding and pipes on top of the building, and from here we can try to snipe off a few more raiders. but we don't find any open pipes. Maybe I was wrong. Maybe there is no back entrance into the plant. Well, we noticed the plant is built on top of a hillside, reinforced with brick walls. A lot of infrastructure went into creating this plant, and it's likely dependent upon utilities from downtown Lexington. So maybe we're looking in the wrong area. Heading back around to the north side of the plant, we can head towards downtown Lexington to see if we can find anything. Sure enough, while exploring, we see a pipe on the other side of a fence. We can access it by opening up a gate, and climbing inside, we find a rail sign. Danger. The north side is blocked off, but turning south, we can walk straight into the Corvega assembly plant. Inside, we see a light, bouncing off the water and casting strange shapes on the pipe. And we find a ghoul. Big ass! These ghouls were attacking something inside this room. A turret. The noise alerted some raiders. We can wait for him to show himself. Ooh. 
Blitz sure is a handy perk, but we've made a bunch of noise. More raiders come down the hallway to investigate. But they're no match for my throat slicer. When they're all dead, we can loot the bodies and then head into a nearby pod. Here we find candles burning in a few containers, a chem box filled with chems, a novice locked ammo box with ammunition, and a toolbox next to Lonnie's terminal. Here we find five entries. The first, Lexington. Lexington is ours! Heck yeah! Wiped out the ghoul swarm without losing anybody. Jared is setting us up in the big car factory for now. In the next one, apartment. Swept through town again today, Gristle and I each took teams and flushed some of the ghoul stragglers out of a block of apartments. Already got my eye on a nice one at the top of the building. Been wanting a place with a view for a while now. Sounds like these raiders are connected to the raiders we find in downtown Lexington. They must all be part of the same gang. In the next one, need another turret. I've asked Jared for another turret down here. He says he's working on it, but ain't convinced he ain't just blowing me off so he can get back to playing with his chems. We need another turret. This pipe access into Lexington has been great for us so far, but if we don't defend it properly, it might as well be an open invitation for anyone looking to get in. Turns out Lonnie was right. It was an open invitation for us. In the next one, drinking party. Gristle and the boys almost got us killed the other day drinking down here, making all sorts of noises. A bunch of ghouls didn't want to miss the party and stumbled in through the pipe. Luckily, the boys can hold their liquor and were able to still shoot straight. In the final one, Jared. Still haven't gotten our other turrets down here. Jared needs to get his head on straight. He's been pouring way too much time and caps into trying to figure out this sight thing, when what we need to be doing is securing this place. I'm gonna go talk to him. Gristle says I'm just gonna make him mad, but someone has to make him see reason. Sight thing? The last time we heard about the sight was from Mama Murphy. It's clear that Jared is the boss of this place. Does Jared have some sort of connection with Mama Murphy? And it's also interesting that we don't find Lonnie here. We don't find her body. She doesn't attack us. Could she be talking with Jared about this right now? Or did Jared kill her when she pestered him about the turret again? We only find one turret down here, so we know she never got it. Heading through the door, we pass down a large pipe-lined hallway. Going up some stairs and rounding the corner, we find a fork. We can go north down the hallway or continue west. We'll try going north for now. We see a door to the left, peering through another stairway. There's flammable oil all over the ground here. Continuing north, we find two wooden crates filled with explosives and chems, one of which is locked with a novice lock. And just beyond this is another door to the same room. The stairway goes pretty high up here. We see a lot of machinery and toxic barrels. Continuing even further north, we find another door to the same room. At the end of this hallway, we find a cooler with ammunition and meat inside and a novice locked chem box with more chems. After looting the cabinets, we can sneak into this room. We find a small nook behind some of these large tanks. Here are some radioactive barrels and one chem cooler on a small table filled with jet. We don't find any enemies here. Going down this room to the south, we see a small little pod to the west. Doesn't appear to be anyone inside. After looting the containers to the south, we can sneak into the pod where we just find a bunch of pre-war car crafting parts. We can loot a few containers. There's a chem box on the wall and that's really it for this room. Now we could go up these stairs to the next level, but I wanna finish exploring this floor first. So heading back out into the hallway, we can retrace our steps south and then turn west. Here we find a door to the left. Opening it slowly. Well, there's something down there, but it's awfully well lit. And our path forward is lined by fences, funneling us right into the open. It's going to be hard to sneak in here. Part of me was tempted to find another way in, but instead we creep in slowly to try and avoid detection. We see a raider to the southeast, but he's pretty far away. And then we see a turret. <laughs> Running back to the hallway. Looks like the raider didn't even notice. So heading back in, we can sneak around to the southwest. 
around some boxes, up a small ramp, around a catwalk, past a big stack of tires, past a raider corpse, until we get within striking distance. Uh. With that, this room is clear, and ooh, we find human bones in a refrigerator here. No evidence as to who these bones belong to. We can loot some fertilizer on the ground. We see a bunch of canisters. Perhaps it was some sort of car coolant. There's another raider corpse here. So that's two dead raiders here. Why are they already dead? We find a duffel bag hiding on a shelf behind some pipes. I suppose it could be that the ghouls found their way even into this room and killed these raiders. Sure enough, we do find ghoul corpses on the ground. After looting the turret wreckage, we can give the place a once-over. Not a whole lot of other loot here. So to continue forward, we open the double doors to the west. This leads to a stairway, bringing us deeper into the factory. Heading up the stairs, we see these hallways are well lit with construction lights that we can't put out. After looting a cooler on a table, we see a number of options before us. We can continue up a staircase to the west, or move down a locker-lined hallway to the north. Here we find a raider. <laughs> Racing back to make sure we weren't seen. It looks like the coast is clear. There's nothing in the lockers or the Nuka-Cola machine, and we find three paths forward. We see an arrow pointing up a staircase to the east, and an elevator right next to this arrow, and some double doors to the north. Opening the double doors leads to a factory floor. I took a big risk there, blitzing on into the factory floor, but I managed to stay hidden, though we hear activity to the west. A raider on the catwalk. And just as I pop into vats, another one walks by a door. We have alerted someone to our presence. Finding a corner to hide in, we can wait until we are hidden again. Heading back down to the ground floor, we see the culprit. It's a turret in a window. With the turret gone, we can explore this place. The turret was inside some sort of pod. After looting the raider, we can round a corner to see where this turret was. It was on top of some crates right next to a terminal called Gristle's Terminal. Gristle, Gristle, why does that name sound familiar? Inside the terminal, we find only one entry, Caravan. Took down another caravan today. Hell yeah, that makes three in one month. To top it off, Freddy came by with good news that another caravan is headed our way. Says he spotted some guards, but it's mostly civilians. They even got an old broad dressed like a fortune teller and some joker in a cowboy hat. Gonna ask Jared for more men to take this caravan down. That hat is mine. And then we remember where we last saw the name Gristle in Concord just outside the Museum of Freedom. Gristle is the name of the raider boss who attacked Preston Garvey, Mama Murphy, Sturges, and the Longs while they were hiding in the Museum of Freedom. It was he whom we attacked when we hopped into that suit of T-45 power armor, grabbed the minigun, and leapt down to the street level. On his corpse was the Corvega storage key. We had no idea what this was for at the time, but now it all makes sense. Gristle was part of Jared's raider gang. They saw Preston Garvey escorting Mama Murphy, Sturges, and the Longs. Jared agreed to send Gristle and some more raiders after them, which is why we found them in Concord. But then that means that the key on his body should work for something in this plant. And in fact, if we turn around, we find a master locked security gate. Now this character has not yet saved Preston Garvey from the Museum of Freedom, so she didn't have the key. Gristle's key works on this door, but if we don't have it, we can pick the lock instead. Inside, we find a novice-locked explosives box, a duffel bag with loot, and ignore this magazine. This is from a mod. This mod gives us a Corvega-themed paint job for the Hellfire Power Armor. It's not part of the game, but if you're interested in it, i link to the mod in the description below. And next to this are three ammunition boxes. 
After we loot all of the containers in this room, we can finish exploring. We see a bunch of coolant caps on assembly lines here. Incidentally, these cooling caps and a lot of the scrap we find in the Corvega plant are rich with aluminum. This is a great place to hit if you're into settlement building. We see a Corvega dashboard on a cabinet to the west right next to a steering wheel. There's a gate, but behind the gate is just a pile of tires. Heading up a ramp, we find a novice locked toolbox with scrap inside, and we can take this ramp all the way to the top. Here we see that the catwalks go sprawling off in all directions, leading to an entire other segment of the plant. We'll follow it west for now. After looting the raider we killed, we can creep forward, making sure our light is off. We don't see anyone up here, but peering down through the grated catwalk, we see a raider standing by an assembly line. Creeping around the corner, let's see if we can shoot through railings in Fallout 4. <laughs> yep, but we've gone and alerted other raiders. I thought I could hide here in this corner, but instead, the raiders tracked me down. <laughs> Well, that makes a handy pile. There was one more raider whom I couldn't see. I could hear him talking, and I waited until my caution meter turned to hidden. Disappearing out, huh? Exploring this catwalk, there are a lot of lights. I got rid of one spotlight, but it's not much of a help. We can loot a myriad of containers along this catwalk, and then climb a staircase to the west, go around some sort of liquid vat, until we see a symbol clacking monkey. Die, monkey. Dug on monkeys. Down the stairs, we find a wooden crate next to a novice-locked tool case. And here we find two beds. We can get rid of the spotlight on the opposite wall. I looked over the ledge trying to find the other raider, but couldn't find him anywhere. So turning around on our way up, we see a ladder going up to the Commonwealth. So this is another way in and out. We'll come back to this in a bit. For now, we need to finish clearing the plant. Continuing along the catwalk, we'll take the stairs down to the bottom level. Here we find more conveyor belts. We see a little wooden shack to the north. Maybe the other raider was hiding in here, but creeping on in, no, we don't see anyone. We find more beds and containers down here. Another chem box and a bottle cap mine sitting on a table. Heading out, we can loot the corpses of the raiders on the ground. We find a power armor frame here. There's a little alley next to this, but there's nothing back here. And this floor is a dead end. The raider we heard must have been in a different room. So retracing our steps, we can head back east. We see a door in the wall to the north. This leads to the door that we found above the main entrance, the one I theorized might have been an employee entrance. Heading back inside, we can move east. We already explored this bottom floor, so instead we'll take the catwalk to the east. At the top of some stairs, we find another door back outside. This door leads to some scaffolding on the side of the building by that delivery ramp where we killed a few raiders before climbing up and going around the building. We'll explore the exterior in a bit, so going back inside, we can continue by going down to the ground floor and then scaling the steps to the east. Here we find another door. This leads back out to that stairway we found in that one room covered in oil close to the pipe entrance. So we've done a big loop. With that path fully explored, we need to head back through the double doors to that elevator. We could go up the steps or we can turn around and head up the first staircase we found when we entered this hallway. Here we find a door leading into a brightly lit hallway. At the end of the hallway, we see furniture blocking our path to the north. Heading in through the southern door, we'll explore these rooms better in a minute, but first I want to clear it of raiders. We see a raider moving through a hole on the other side of the wall. He almost saw us, so hiding here until he drops his guard, we can sneak back into the room. Looks like he's moved on. Oh, there he is. With this guy dead, we can go through the eastern door. This brings us back out to the hallway on the other side of that furniture pile. Heading northeast, we see a room, but no one's here. Opening the big blue doors leads to a lobby. Checking the bathrooms, looks like no one's here. Okay, we must have cleared it. 
This is a more highly finished portion of the factory. They have a big Corvega on display. Perhaps it is where company officials met with investors or travelers to talk about the Corvega business. Or maybe customers could walk right in and buy a Corvega. The double doors here lead back outside. These are the front doors we saw earlier, right before that cracked pipe in the ground. Heading back inside, we see a skeleton pushed up into the corner to the east. A car salesman, perhaps? The Raiders have done a good job of booby-trapping the entrance. We see a tripwire on the ground next to a makeshift bomb. Going through the hallway from the lobby, we can better explore the room to the east. This room is just filled with ruined, tipped-over furniture. Great opportunity to make use of the scrounger perk. Passing through the western room, we can go back through that hole in the wall. Here we find a woman pushed underneath her desk. She must have hid under her desk when the bombs dropped, maybe thinking that they were an earthquake. Heading out of this room to the north, we find another male skeleton on the ground. Another pre-war Corvega employee. But with that, we finish exploring the front end. Retracing our steps, we have only one path to go, but we can travel it two ways. We can either go up the stairs with the white arrow or take the elevator. I want to make sure I don't miss anything, so I'm going to go up the stairs. On the mezzanine level here, we find a small kitchen or a break room. There's a TV in the corner and beer and cigarettes let out. Here we just find a bit of scrap and minor foodstuffs in the fridge. We can head back to the stairs and follow them all the way up until we pass through an opening into the primary factory floor. Turning right, we see the elevator we would have come out of had we taken it. Creeping forward, we can find a dark spot. Here's one next to the skeletons of two factory workers. We see movement deeper on in. We have a few ways to resolve this. The first is to creep forward and access the novice-locked terminal on this pillar. After hacking it, we can activate a connected Protectron. Powering up. Protectron on duty. If we do so, a Protectron walks out of his charging dock and begins to attack the Raiders. We can find a dark spot nearby to watch. Your attempted escape is only making things worse for you. Law and order has prevailed. And the Protectron deals with them handily. But this is rather anticlimactic, so instead, we'll try doing it the good old-fashioned way. Reloading a previous save. Instead of walking right to where that raider was, I'm gonna try creeping around the perimeter of this factory floor. Moving west, we can turn south, and we see some turrets on top of the floating pod. I know you're here! This has alerted one raider. He comes out to the factory floor looking for us. We can try to stick to the shadows, creeping around the southern end of this factory floor. Moving into the corner until we're hidden. We see a skeleton here. Ooh. Looks like my flashlight alerted the raider. Waiting until we're hidden, we can get rid of a spotlight. What the hell was that? We can move east under this floating pod. And here we find a safe hiding behind some plywood. We'll have to make sure that we remember that. Oh, looks like the raider found us, but we don't see him anywhere. Moving out from under here, we can hide behind a big red machine. We see him moving off in the distance. As our caution meter goes down, we see him walking this way. Scared, huh? <coughs> I've done this hundreds of times. Think you'll be any different? All right, so that leaves one more. Heading southeast, under the pod, we can loot the machine gun turret we destroyed earlier, then round a corner and go south up the stairs. Here we find a skeleton hanging halfway off this ramp and a big red button. Pushing it extends the ramp, and strangely enough, even though it made a whole lot of noise, it doesn't seem to alert the raiders on the other end. Creeping across as quickly as we can, we head into the pod. We see the raider in the next pod over, waiting until he moves over here. We can sneak behind and... <laughs> raider scum, wait a minute. I thought the boss's name was supposed to be Jared. It was then I realized I must have come here at some time in the past on this character. Logging into a character whom I know has never been here. Sure enough, the raider boss in this pod is named Jared. And on his inventory is the Corvega safe key. 
In the back of his pod, we find an End of Dungeon steamer trunk, and on a desk next to a terminal, we find a copy of Grognak the Barbarian in the bosom of the Corsair Queen. Critical hits with unarmed and melee attacks permanently do 5% more damage. And taking a look at Jared's terminal, we find five entries. In the first, called Setting Up Shop, gunfire's finally quieted down. Suppose that means either Lonnie or Gristle has wiped up the last of the ghouls, or they're currently serving as someone's meal. But now Lexington is secure. I can finally get to work. In the next one, Stumped, nothing is working. The old woman, she used to just huff some jet, pop some pills, then she'd start babbling, spotting vision after vision, and they all turned out true. The raiders burning the town, killing the parents, stealing the kids, stealing me. I remember the look in her eyes when she saw my fate. Kid, you're gonna be a monster. All true. If I could get that sort of power, that sight, the Commonwealth, the other gangs, no one would have a prayer. But nothing's working. Maybe I need to try upping the dosages. I'm gonna need another bucket. In the next one, subjects, it's not the chems. They're just a trigger for the sight. It's me. I'm the problem. Wish I'd realized it before my arms looked like pin cushions, but at least it's a new lead. I need subjects. In the next one, experiments continue. Still no success, but the rumor of free chems has brought plenty of new recruits. Ranks are nearly back up to where they were before we cleared out Lexington. This must mean that Jared had some deserters after they took the plant, because remember we learned from Lonnie's terminal that these guys didn't lose anyone while clearing the ghouls from the plant. Lonnie thinks it's a waste of time, says we need to spend our time building up our defenses, but Lonnie doesn't make the decisions. I do. She does seem to be enjoying her new position though. Maybe another dose of Psycho will get her visions firing. Could it be that Lonnie wasn't by that pipe because she died from ODing on chems? In the final one, she's here. Gristle says there's a caravan headed this way. Some joker in a cowboy hat with a laser musket, three civilians and one frail old woman dressed like a fortune teller. It's her. I know it's her. I sent Gristle to collect her. I wonder if she'll recognize me. Of course she will. She saw this coming after all. So it was Mama Murphy. Jason met Mama Murphy at some point in his past, when he was a child, before raiders burned his town. And ever since then, he's been trying to get the sight himself. When he realized it didn't work that way, that he wasn't going to get it, he began experimenting on other people. I think we can get from this terminal that he was attracting new recruits to his raider gang by offering free chems, and when they arrived, he would experiment on some of them to see if they had the sight. After all, we don't find any settler corpses here, only the corpses of other raiders. And remember we found those raider corpses in a lab of sorts, where we found fertilizer bags on the ground and unmarked canisters. Could that be Jared's chem workshop? Incidentally, looting the steamer trunk causes one final raider to spawn on the factory floor. I tried this three different times on two different characters and had the same result. We can use the key we got on Jared's body to unlock his safe hiding behind that plywood. And inside we find a small selection of explosives and scrap. From here, we have a few paths forward. We do see a door in the eastern wall with exit above it. If we go out this door, we arrive in a small concrete room with a chained door on the other end. Removing the chains leads us back out to the delivery area. This was that chained door we discovered when we arrived. We see all that scaffolding off to the east. I'd rather not climb it from the ground. That just makes me a sitting duck. So instead, we're gonna go back inside. Retracing our steps, we can pass by the employee-only door until we find that ladder leading to the roof. We arrive on the roof right next to a raider. Hiding behind some pipes until our caution meter goes down, we can try to sneak behind him. Oh. 
got him, but that alerted some more, so we can hide until our caution meter goes down. Here we find a door in the side of one of these pipes. We can use it for temporary cover. We find an ammo box and a chem cooler here. The pipe continues along to the east where we find a hatch to the right. This just leads to a small area where we find the skeleton of a worker. This was where he was having lunch the day the bombs dropped. Going back in the pipe and continuing south, we find another hatch to the northeast. This leads us back outside, but the noise of the hatch alerted the raiders. Hopping out, we see a raider climbing the stairs. As soon as she passes, we can sneak up behind her. Bingo. Heading back down, we can hide until the coast is clear. Passing some steps and heading east, we find a staircase to the north. Looking east, we see that pod we saw when we arrived, where we shot that raider through the window. Let's go there first. We need to loot his corpse. We could take the stairs down, or we can turn south into the pod. Here we find a chem box on the wall, and we can loot that raider's corpse. There's some jet on a table here. And after looting a few more containers, we can continue north until we find a new room in this pod to the south. Here we find a lot of fuel canisters and random scrap, an ammo box on a shelf, but nothing else of note. So out of the pod and heading north, we can head down to the ground floor. Here we see those two delivery trucks, one of which has a ramp in the back. Creeping forward, we can open it quietly. Where we find... When dead, we can loot their jet coolers. And now the ground is clear. Now to scale this scaffolding tower to make sure there are no snipers waiting for us when we head to the roof. And sure enough, we find one. We can use this big bulb in the middle as cover until... Well, great. See, when they don't explode, you don't have a chunk you can find to loot the corpse, so instead you gotta go all the way down. Once we loot the body, we can go north across the scaffolding, back through the floating pod across the road to the rooftop of the main factory building. Here we see that the stairs go down to the east, and this leads us to that other door. And the steps here lead us all the way back down to the concrete platform on the other side of that road. But... No need to go in or down, so heading all the way back up, we can now take the stairs where we killed that one raider to the primary rooftop. Here we see raiders all over the place. Thankfully, it's still dark, but the sun is rising. I need to work quickly. We see one raider coming down a staircase. While we wait for her to come down, we can check out this pod on a lower level. Inside, we find a chem box, an ammo container, and a terminal we can use to turn off the spotlights, though that won't be too useful with dawn approaching. Heading back out of the pod, we see the raider trying to go back up. Moving quickly but stealthily, we can sneak up the stairs. Ah! Oh yeah, this one didn't fall. The higher we climb, the more sunlight we get exposed to. The raider at the very top heard us. Let's hide behind this pillar until our caution meter goes down. Sneaking up, we pass a smokestack, and now we're bathed in sunlight. Ah! You sound like footsteps these days. What the fuck was that? Nothing for it had to use vats. And now I remember why I came here in the past with this character. I had to place one of Tinker Tom's Mila's. So coming back on another character, whom I know has never been here before, I can show you that this is where we find the Repair Bobblehead. Why go down with the ship when you can try to fix it? Fusion cores permanently last 10% longer. Oh man, what a perk. I should have gotten it for this character long ago. The toolbox has quite a stock of ammunition. Back to my assassin, there are one or two enemies left to kill. But first, let's soak in the beauty of this Corvega smokestack. Isn't that just gorgeous? I want to play your home here. Heading south, and instead of going down the western staircase where we came from, we can turn east, go down some steps around the smokestack, and around another smokestack, and down some more, and around some more, down and around, around and down, until we find them. 
Well, we have just descended rapidly, and the sun has fully risen. So much for stealth. We've now got one guy lobbing Molotov cocktails at us, but I believe he's the last one. So running off just long enough for him to lose our trail, we can sneak back when hidden. This guy was on the top of the roof, walking around on the bottom level. We see him off in the distance, keeping to the shadows, using the pipes and beams as cover. Hopefully I can get a melee strike on this guy. Pulling out my throat slicer and sneaking around. Ah! Oh, where'd he go? Oh, wow. Guy nearly jumped out of his pants. And with that, we have fully explored and killed every raider atop the Corvega assembly plant. Can you believe that I've been doing this for this long and I'm just now getting to the Corvega assembly plant? I've been avoiding it because it's one of those places where everyone's been. It's one of those dungeons where every major faction sends us to. It's in Lexington, really close to Concord and Sanctuary. You can probably count on one hand the number of people who have played Fallout 4 and have never been here. But you know what? I've covered so much of the Commonwealth that this is one of the last places on my checklist. And I'm so glad I came back. It's one of the best designed dungeons in all of Fallout 4. And the lore is pretty fascinating. What do you think of Jared? There are some who have come up with theories that he must be Mama Murphy's son. After all, we learned from his terminal that he was stolen by raiders. Since in his past he had known Mama Murphy, could it be that raiders stole him from his mother, Mama Murphy? It's possible, but I think a much more likely explanation is that he was just a small boy who happened to live in the same settlement as Mama Murphy. If we talk with Mama Murphy, she tells us that in her youth, she used to be quite tough. She claims that she once ripped the head off of a raider using her bare hands, which resulted in her getting the nickname Murphy the Madwoman. However, I think that this part of her past was long before she ever met Jason. After all, he recognized her description, the description that Gristle gave to him, which means he knew Mama Murphy when Mama Murphy was dressed like an elderly fortune teller. So my bet is that before Quincy, Mama Murphy likely lived in another settlement, a settlement that got sacked by raiders. Raiders who killed all of the adults and kidnapped the children, including Jason. How did Mama Murphy survive? Well, she has the sight. We already learned that she looked into Jason's future. She knew the kind of man he would become, and perhaps she learned the ultimate fate of her town. And without telling a soul, perhaps in an effort not to tempt fate, she left, possibly heading towards Quincy. The reason I think Jason is not her son is because he says, do you think she'll recognize me? But if he was her son, of course she would recognize him. She wouldn't even need to have the sight to do so. Any mother would recognize her son, no matter how much time went by. Something we learned from Empire of the Sun. At any rate, Jason is dead, and we've cut off the head of the Raider gangs here in Lexington. What are your thoughts on the Corvega assembly plant? Did you find Jason's secret stash under his floating pod? Did you unlock Gristle's secret stash using the key we found on his corpse in Concord? And did you ascend the smokestack and walk away with the repair bobblehead? Let me know your thoughts in the comments section below. I publish a new video six days a week on a wide range of topics spanning all of the games. So if you want to make sure you don't miss my next episode, be sure to subscribe and to click that bell notification button. I've got a new shirt in the shop, folks. Rubble Ramp. We didn't find many rubble ramps here in the Corvega assembly plant, but when exploring the ruins of downtown Boston or the Capital Wasteland, we find ramps made from all sorts of industrial ruin. These allow us to access hitherto unaccessible heights where we can find amazing loot. Celebrate this fact with my brand new shirt, Rubble Ramp. It comes in a variety of products, including shirts, mugs, and even posters. I think it makes an exceptional poster design. You can find a link to my shop in the description below, or you can click here. If you like what I do and you want to support me in a more personal way, consider becoming one of my patrons on Patreon. But more than anything, I'm just so glad you're here watching this video with me today. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you tomorrow morning, bright and early, with a brand new video.